Can you stop harassing the old lady? Wait, she's not old. She's older than him. Don't let him talk about you that way, Pearl. Talk about you however I want stuff. Is it nice and cool outside now? Yeah? yeah. Are you going to talk in the mic? What do you have to say? Ah. Oh, Bo. Oh, Bo. Oh, Bo. Oh, Bo. Oh, Bo. Oh, Bo. Bo. Regard, Bo. I don't have a singing board. So it's after midnight. It is after midnight because once again, I forgot <laughs> equipment at home. But this is name pending. This is name pending. I'm Keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. You can see the names below. That's Pearl. We That's got a Cabo. Cabo. We That's got a October. Toby and a Bo. Bo Duke. Oh, Bo Duke. That's all the furry co-hosts. All the furry co-hosts. Yeah, because Nessie doesn't care to be part of it. Yeah, fuck Nessie. No one loves her. She's a saint. <laughs> uh, so, so the 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 heat of the angry Texas sun has come forth. It is, when we're recording, what month is it? June? It's June, it's, right? It's about to be July, yeah. yeah. It's June, though. So, like, this this week was the first week where the sun really came out and, like, was hate-fucking me in the face. Oh, straight hate. And like, it was just like, oh, man. Like, it's one of those, I get on the bike, or I was like, oh, no, I'll ride tomorrow. And then I wake up late that day, and I'm like... Yeah, maybe I'm not riding because like, I don't want to be a, soaked in everything. <laughs> People from other like countries and, and places don't realize just how hateful the Texas sun is. They're like, oh, it gets hot where I live. And it's like... But Texas hates you. But Texas proper hates you. You're like, eh, it gets hot. We've seen 100 degrees. It's oh, like, drink water. You've seen 100 degrees. But have you it's seen 97 Texas feels like degrees? 118. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, Texas has gotten hotter. Welcome to summer and welcome to hell. Yeah, pretty much. When it's it hot. is hot enough, where I'm like, mm, fuck it, I'm not doing anything outside right now. It's hot, okay? and then my inside gets really clean. I start reorganizing things inside, and well, I'll do shit in my shop. Yeah, it's like, not in the Texas yeah, sun. Yeah, but it's not like in the sun because I was going, I, I purchased some Texas sage plants because, you know, I'm a big fan of those. Oh, um, and I was like, you're yeah, slut. You're glutton. I'm going to I'm gonna go like get my shovel and dig. I like set them down on the back patio and I'm out there for like 30 seconds. I'm like, nah, bro. It ain't that time. It ain't that yeah, time. No, it's hot. I mean, my yard's just being in taller and taller. And I go inside and my weather thing is like, it's 103 degrees. And I was like, that sounds about right. That sounds accurate. Accurate. I mean, it's like my back's sweating and I got no fat there. It's like my my back is sweating. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know my toes had sweat glands. <laughs> it gets hot. Just like when everything turns to a swamp. Oh, everything. You're like, I got swamp eyeballs. So you mean you're crying? No, it's just, it's hot. My <laughs> eyes are sweating. What was it? Uh... I think it was yesterday. I uh, I I went home, and I I wasn't going to do anything. So like I I took my clothes off because you know, I was I don't know I was gonna take a nap or something. I was like, ah oh, man, I want to smoke. Well, I don't want to put clothes back on. So I went. And I sat outside in my underwear. And I'm just like, mmm, delicious mm, tobacco. Yep, that that's how we do it. So, what have you been reading, book talk wise? Book talk. Because um, I'm reading Frost and Fortitude by, don't remember the name, but it's pretty much a, kind of seems like a Robin Hood remake in a way, or a continuation of a story. It's by, was it JP? Nope, damn it, I just turned off my phone. It's AP Beswick. A Frost of Fear and Fortitude. And essentially, they're obviously there's snow, frost, but this whole thing's where I'm at right now is it's only like a four or five hour book, so it's a short story. Okay. But it, it definitely has the feel of there's magic. The main character that you're following is has all these magic things, but it's like, oh, where'd you grow up? I don't know. Well, how'd you earn your powers? I don't know. Or I can't tell you is, okay. is his response. 
and everyone's just like, well, what? I don't remember. I don't know. It's not that I don't want to tell you. I just don't. And you find out this in like the first couple chapters. That it's, sounds a little sketch to me. It's like, okay, so potentially you have this crazy badass that doesn't remember. So did he get his mind wiped for this? Or So I'm still in this, what's going on in the book? What's going on in the book? But it's, it's pretty much a short story. And it's it's a good escape from reality. But it's pretty much frozen tundra. Yeah. Like kids get lost and they're over here exploring it. And it was like, oh, we got these like evil demons that turn into humans or eat the souls of humans. And it was like, oh, we're going to find them before they take everyone else on the farm. And it's like. That doesn't turn out well, does it? I guess you have to read the book and find out. No, nah, it sounds like a lot of work. It does. I don't like reading. No. He's swimming again. That's your dog. Yeah. You created this monster. I created a monster. Bo Dukes over here swimming in our little kiddie pool. Both your child and your dog yep. are obsessed with water. But that's been my book reading for the week. I feel like you were reading this last week. I was reading portions of it last week. Yeah. I need you to speed back up, man. I do. I'm reading a bunch of my self-help books. I went from like February to April. So... I read through like two months of reading and about a week. Okay, my book. Which All is yours. Far more important than your book. Always. Why wouldn't it be? It is called Trader's Blade, The Great Cloak, Great Coats, Book One, by Sebastian de Castell. Um, and it has, it very much takes a nod from The Three Musketeers. But not like the movie or like any media depictions of the Three Musketeers. Like old school it's like, Three Musketeers? It's like the book version of the Three Musketeers. Because the book version of the Three Musketeers, there's some like darkness and shit going on there, right? Yeah. Um, that the movie's only hinted at in some aspects. But you, you start out and you're, you're following along and early on in the story, you find out that these three individuals, um, obviously, right? Uh, are uh, they're part of what used to be called the Great Cloak, right? And it was an organization, and they were essentially, you know, can you fix that? They were essentially, um, they were essentially the king's guard, kind of. They they were their like highway patrol. They looked out for the peasants. They they had more authority than the dukes um so they were his right hand without being his right hand right they uh, cared about the community and their job was to uphold the law and to keep everyone in check this is what the king said and this is what we're doing right but for one reason or another when the dukes rebelled against the king and came to their the castle to dispose him to depose him they stood aside while he was killed. In formation, just hung out and, and watch it go down. Interesting. Right? And so we start off and we're following these three. And, you know, they used to be called the Great Cloaks. Or, yeah, Great Coats. Coats. I keep saying Cloaks. Great Coats. But now the populace likes to call them the Tatter Coats. Because they they're turned on their king. Well, their their honor is in tatters, right? Okay. Um, so they have no honor and they're despised and the dukes are against them and it's just everything's bad. But without giving too away too much more of the story, there's there's magic in this world, there's badass swordsmanship in this world, there's you know it's it's a a cool dynamic because they were left with missions by their king like every member of the great coats was given a mi individually pulled in and given a mission by their king and so we're following the what was the leader of the great coats as he's trying to fulfill his mission even after the king's death even after the king's death and some of the coats had missions that they were specifically instructed not to tell anyone else about 
it definitely so there's, adds a lot of different plot there's, points. There's intrigue, there's assassination, there's epic fights, there's all sorts of stuff. My favorite thing is early on, one of the main characters, he gets a uh, crossbow bolt through his leg. And so, you know, they finally stop and they're going to take care of the wound. And he's like, okay, what are we going to do? Okay, punch, pull, slap. Yeah. It essentially, the concept is, is that you can only focus on one form one of pain at a time. At a time. Yep. So punch, pull the, the arrow out and then slap as hard as you can. I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's I mean, just, it's stuff like that that I find hilarious. Medically, you can only focus on one pain at a time. So I overall, I think it, it, it ties, it feels very much like that three musketeers. Right, like you get a lot of that, and you get a lot of the movements going on in the background, and these guys are trying to—they're trying to hold up to their honor, and they're trying to fulfill their mission, and they're trying to maintain what they had, and then reclaim it again to the standard. To the to the standard, right? Because they want to uphold the expectations, and there's there's time skips back and forth, back all the way to the beginning when everything was starting into now right that definitely makes the book more interesting because now you have the past the present the current everything else that's going on at the same time oh she's going for the ball in there she's going for the ball hi Bo I am over here trying to hold a conversation pause while I try and dissect this toy he pauses as Bo just Needs to be in my face. That's your dog. He loves me this much. It says something about you, I think. That I need attention? Yeah. I'm in danger. Mike has a knife. Ugh, okay. You're on Cabo, making him soaked. But I'm sure Cabo doesn't care. Cabo doesn't care. Cabo doesn't care if you're soaking me. Or just, just lay down, because... You're fine. But do you not want the ball? You were trying to dissect it. You were literally eating it. I mean, I'm glad all the toys that came in those boxes are finally being... Utilized? Utilized. Yeah, you can count on Pearl. Hey, that's fine. Before I had Starbuck, who just destroyed <laughs> toys. <laughs> uh, I just got this Starbuck. toy and pieces. Old lumpy head. Old lumpy head. Uh, but anyways, that was about the great coats. I, um, it sounds interesting. It definitely gives you the intrigue. You know, I, I, I'm not that far into the story. Me neither. Because I've been I, on this I, book I, forever. I, I picked it up yesterday. And I haven't done any reading today. Uh, but a lot of driving. A lot of driving. A lot of existing. What? What is it, Bo? What is it, you wet mothball? Yeah, my shirt soaked. So, I mean, that's but that's Mike's book talk. That is that is book talk. Um, what do we want to talk about next? We we were talking about a couple things beforehand. So one thing I want to touch on, which I think we can we can talk about from many different aspects, subscriptions. Ah, uh, yes. We've talked about this on podcast before, but now we're seeing a metric of our age group, anywhere from 25 to I think it was like 35, 37. Yeah pretty much a huge exodus away from subscription based or at least a subscription into every single thing they're minimizing it so we're having this huge exodus of subscriptions towards media like your hulus your netflix your prime well, I mean, you you remember i signed off of everything a while ago yep the only thing i have left is crunchyroll i mean i started using plex it was like the stuff i didn't get for free with Stuff I already pay for, like I need my phone. Mm -hmm. So with AT and T, I get HBO Max. So I get that, and I already have Amazon Prime because well, yeah, it's Amazon Prime. So I mean, I have those, but pretty much everything else is in Netflix because whatever my wife wants to watch on that. I think the breaking point for me was is you know Netflix just kept increasing in price. Yeah, and I was sitting there going, there is not enough stuff I'm watching on Netflix that a, feel like I'm getting a good return. 
Yeah, I'm not getting a decent enough return on this to... And then, you know, Hulu, I got fed up with a long time ago because they're like, oh, well, we know that you're paying for this, but we're still going to put commercials We're still going to put... Yeah. And I'm like, guys, if I'm paying for a streaming service... I don't want to see commercials. I, I don't, why don't I just pay for cable? Yeah. And I had already been away from cable and normal TV for so long that when I go and I hang out with my parents, I'm actively bothered by commercials. Oh, yeah. Like, like actively frustrated by commercials. It's like, I'll just hop on my phone at this point and never hop back up off of it. No. Or I'll go out and it. do something. Yeah. Like, I commercials are so much of a buzzkill for me watching whatever that I'll just stop. Like, even to the point now, if I'm paying for a subscription, I don't want the pause that would normally be a commercial break. Like, that still bothers me in some shows. Where it's like, we'd be in the middle of a scene, and then I get this little blackout for a second. Yeah. And then it replays the past, like, 30 seconds, just in case I forgot. I was like, can we not do this in streaming? It's like, you know what? I'm just going to start buying all these DVDs, buying all these series, and I'll put, put it on put my it own on server. Plex. Yeah. I mean, and then and I'm going to share like, it with your friends. Hey, Mike, do you have a Plex server? Yeah, here's all mine. Okay, well, here's all mine. And it's legal as long as we're not making anyone pay for it. So it was like, I'm just, I'm sharing. We're all being our own little blockbusters. Because I know I'm slowly pulling stuff off of DVDs. I've still got boxes of DVDs that I need to pull stuff off of. I still need to pull stuff off VHS. I still got VHSs here. I think I've only got Evan Gillian on VHS right now. So, I mean, I'm in the process of moving all that over. My buddy has, I mean, he's like 45, almost 50. So he has everything under the sun, but he's a Linux guru, very yeah. similar to you. So all his stuff is on a Linux server and he's he's fully has it set up. He's like, oh yeah, I can remote into my home from from work and i can do all these and i can download more stuff and boom it'll all be set up on the media server so i have everything set up i wish i could remote into my computer from home oh i get so much work. shit done because then i would just sit there anytime i like got tired of work stuff i would just go at home and just like boop 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 it was just like just edit like file names and shit yeah just just your simple upkeep but yeah, we're seeing a huge exodus from pretty much subscriptions. I mean, because it was increase of price. It's and, the same reason everyone did a huge exodus from cable. I mean, the only people who still have cable are folks like my parents. Yeah, you're talking about the older, the generation. older generations. Yeah, uh, because I, I mean, I paid for cable for a little bit, and then I was like, "This is kind of bullshit. I'm kind, I'm kind of tired of this." I've never paid for cable. I did it for like a year, I think. Nope, I just, I didn't. I still do want a landline, but I just... Haven't. Ew, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mainly so I don't have to have a phone. You're fucking disgusting. Yep, I still don't want a phone. Okay, come here. You're gonna lay right there, and you're gonna be happy about it. But I will end up either getting a landline or a CB radio. I do... I have done a lot of research, and I think whenever I set up my workshop, I'm going to set up a ham radio bench. I mean, essentially, I just want a in case of emergencies. Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, I'm moving more towards ham or CB or... One and I'll, year. Set up, I'll set up a tower and... Yep, and just in case of emergency, I can still at least get through as long as I can have power. And it'll be fun to sit around on it every now and then. And just, just listen. Listen or chat with people or whatever. Even if it's one of the old hand cranks or even if I have a battery bank or whatever it hooks up to. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, bummer. Okay. But it's really one of those in case of asteroid. Which landline is really dying. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not upkept like it used to be. Nope. So, I mean, it's it's interesting to see the death of all these different things. Well, I mean, like fax machine, right? Like, people still use fax machines. The amount of offices that still use fax machines, and it's like, oh, well, fax it to us. Hold on. Let me go find someone who has a fax. Or, you know, just go pay $4 for a fax because no one uses it anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all I'm doing is sending one page. It'll be $4.32. Yeah. It's, like, it's one page. 
Yes, but it's still four dollars and thirty-two cents. That's why I'm surprised. Like places like Best Buy are still even functional. Like I thought Best Buy would have died five years ago. You know. Well, shoot, you have all these other things. Fitbit's dying. Really? The company apparently. Me and my wife were talking about it. She was like, apparently Fitbit is just stopping. I haven't really dove more into it. I was like, oh yeah. She was like, well yeah, because your phones, your other watches have pretty much everything that Fitbit does. Your phone does it automatically. Every step you take, it tracks it. At, Every move you make, I'll be watching you. I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> I regretted it the moment I said those words. I can't, I can't stop myself. <laughs> Because I would walk forever. <laughs> because I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. No, but essentially we're we're seeing a death of a lot of companies. Based yeah, a, off... lot of, a lot of tech companies that used to be big are being dropped and they're being replaced. You know, I mean, Silicon Valley's dying. Yeah. It's almost gone. Like everyone bailed out of Silicon Valley and they've gone to other states or they've gone to they've gone further north or whatever, right? They've they've gone elsewhere. We're seeing the death of a lot, but we also see growth in other avenues no, there's, that there's, we wouldn't have seen. There is growth in other places, right? Um and I'm hoping it, it provides more opportunity for, for new big heavy hitters to come in and and put put their you know, put their mark on the market, right? Yeah, definitely be the change, make the change wherever. Because I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm tired of what feels like the semi monopoly of of things like Google and and YouTube and you yeah. Know. I mean, you got your Google, your YouTube, any of your yeah. I mean, Apple is another one that has a huge monopoly in at certain aspects. Yeah, I mean, on a on, honestly, a piece of shit device. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Apple. But I know a lot of people who, what what is the this thing that I've heard about lately where there are some girls out there who they find out that like you have an Android, you you have an Android. Oh, don't you're want poor. To you. Yeah, you're poor. It's like, I'm sorry, what? Apple started off very well. I think it was like mid 2000s, 2000 2010, with having a designing application that like you can design very well on it. Mm-hmm. But they haven't changed it in over a decade. It was like, oh, we updated this. Same thing with their phone. It was like, we have a phone that does all this. Okay, cool. What What's next? It's like, well, we we added a better camera. It's like, we have the same camera that Android updated five phones ago. It's like, well, we updated our. You can you can do your own ringtone now. But I've been able to do that on a Nokia phone. I've been able to do that forever. Like you're I did that with out, my razor back in the day. Exactly. You're pushing out all these new things that are only new to Apple users because they've been on Apple so long. Yeah. I will give them I give them props on the iPads and the was it the Apple Pencil? It is more responsive than most Windows and applications on there for designing. Yeah. But I still can't use Photoshop all the way. Like Okay. I, how I'm better off using a mouse and a mouse pad and a mouse trackpad. So it's no, half of one and half of another. And, and, and one of the big problems is that they used to, when what's his face was alive, what, what was his name again? Uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. When Steve Jobs was alive, they, they, I mean, one of the big things is that they had hardware that was designed for the software. Yes. Right? And he was very, very critical and very particular about it being built right. Yes. Being quality. And it's like as soon as he died, that quality started to fall off. And it, it was instant. It was a cliff. They just fell off and it disappeared. Nobody seemed to care anymore. It was just another company pushing stuff. Yeah. How can we make more money? Where can we cut the corner? And every time a, co- a company gets obsessed with making more money and cutting corners, it eventually kills a company. Yeah. And it's like, congratulations, guys. You no longer have innovation. You no longer... It's like, no, it's just money. Well, I mean, the same thing's happening with Google, right? It's gotten so big that it's become a monster. And it's no longer about innovation. And it's no longer about... Same thing with Microsoft. 
I had a friend who worked at Microsoft. We 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 know him. I've had and, a couple different friends working at Microsoft. And he was yeah. like, you know, it's just this like circle of hell that they live in working there. A bunch of them have left. And you, you go there to get the Microsoft I've worked at Microsoft the resume on the pattern. resume pattern. Yeah. And then you dip out. And all of them are I've had two that I know personally that were project managers there and they're like, it was hell. Yeah. It was like for eight months, a year, year and a half that I worked there, I was getting paid very, very well. But I didn't have I didn't have me time. My I saw my kid who was younger and then I pretty much woke up a year and a half later and the kids hit in puberty and they're going to all these games and I was like, I didn't even know you were playing sports. It's like holy a year and a half you miss out of life. Yeah. Because you're so busy. I just I can't do it. Well that's gonna be intermission. Hey, intermission. Intermission. Catch you guys at twelve thirty. All right, now we're live. Mm. Hey, welcome back. I guess we switch dogs. I have no dog and you have the wet dog. Hey, wet dog. Wet dog. Hey, wet bro. dog. I love you. <laughs> yeah. He just wants love. All the time. I was just like, okay. That's both your dog. And then he does that. He's like, all right, I got enough love. Refilled, <laughs> refilled my tank. That's Cabo. Hey, Cabo. Cabo, Bo, Toby. Hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to podcast right now, bud. Yeah, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys didn't see is Pearl totally growled at Bo, and Bo's like, ooh, okay, <laughs> this is a danger that, toy right now. It's sounded, my toy, but this is a danger toy. That sounded a lot more vicious than I've heard recently. <laughs> As she's playing with just a ball. He just wants the ball. But no, we were talking about these big companies. And another thing I saw interesting was Microsoft took out their deep underwater storage. Yeah, you mentioned that, which is wild. And I mean, I think that ties back into the death of AI and cloud computing and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I mean, we're talking about the actual deep storage, actual deep storage, not deep storage, but underwater deep. And we don't have to worry about that anymore because they're they're pretty much just saying we're not doing this anymore and they i can't remember the quantifiable size that they had they're like we just there's no point in us doing it anymore it costs too much it's like hold on microsoft microsoft is saying Bo, cut it out no one cares it's not your ball. Play with another toy. Even they're saying it costs too much for us. Okay, hold on. You're Microsoft. It costs too much for Microsoft. It's like, how much storage do you have? Because all you see is just them picking up what looks like an old oil tanker, which obviously right. there's computer which, stuff. Which, I mean, there. for people who don't know, the reason that you're storing it deep under the ocean water is because it's cold down there. Yep, because of heat, the yeah. heat output. You know, it does make me interested because I do think, uh, here's me, the doomsayer again, right? Mm -hmm. I do think World War Three is on the horizon. Um, assuming that we survive this without any kind of nuclear holocaust going down, right? No, it's all going to be fallout. We're I'm just going to live fallout. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I don't want to live the fallout lifestyle. I like my conveniences. <sighs> You're right. I just bought a Sam's Club membership. It's going to be you living on my land. You and your wife and your kid living off my land as we fight off raiders. Who says we won't be the raiders? <laughs> hey, Mike, I'm fiending for uh, need some, some aggression. Need need some of that jet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to be interested to see what kind of technology come out of such a conflict. Oh, I mean, every time there's been a conflict, there's been massive knowledge pushed out like we look at world war ii just the medical advances that 
Germany pushed through. Horrendous things they did. Well, not just Germany, but Japan. Yeah, Germany and Japan. We saw what the body could take. We learned more about the body. Horrible things that were done, but because yeah, we, of- we learned at what temperature a person boils from the inside out. <sighs> yeah. The many uses of- Various chemicals. Yep. What you can breathe and what you can't breathe before actually you thinking about it right now i'm getting like disgusted just thinking oh, it, about some it of is the shit. disgusting yeah just thinking about some of the things that they did but to even if women. we jump before world war ii let's jump back to the 1800s like doctors weren't really allowed to cut open bodies and see what happened or like autopsies were just like you died yeah all right get buried it was like yeah. can we like oh no that's uh defacing and that they didn't volunteer for science so doctors would pay for grave robbers to steal bodies and bring it to them and because that's the only way they could practice yep and this is how they taught and was, this is what the heart looks like and this is what the lungs look like and this is how we can fix this is like oh we can put a tube down here and fix is sadly the only way we've ever learned by just some horrendous shit. Some horrendous shit. Yeah. I'm not about that life. I don't want to live through any horrendous shit. And I don't want anyone I know to live through I'm, some horrendous shit. I'm pretty content where we're at. I'm actually shocked, to be quite honest. Because I thought that we would have had a world war or a civil war kickoff. Already. Already. Because I thought years ago that we were overdue. Oh, definitely. I've like been saying 20 it for... years ago, I thought we were overdue. Yeah. And... Here we are. No, we just have conflicts and then we disappear from wherever and just watch wherever get worse. Yeah. I mean. Like Afghanistan. I mean, we went from Gulf War to Iraq, Afghanistan. And then we just go from one extremist to another. It's like, oh, well, all Muslims are bad. It was like, well, they're, they're not. They're not. It was like, oh, well, they're all bad there's, because they all did 9-11. It was like. There's a lot of Muslims out there that make a bad name for Muslims. Yeah, but from 2001, that's where it was. It was like, oh, it was like, this this isn't, why are we jumping from one extreme to another? Yeah, I'm, it, I'm tired of the extremism. Well, even before that, we had the Oklahoma bombing. It was like, well, that was a white man. Well, all white men are bad. The light. Bummer. I blame Pearl or Bo. I blame Bo. But no, we've always jumped from one extreme to another. And we jumped back onto this whole Muslim extremist when we had the Boston bombing. Mm hmm. Or when all the white women were going over there to join ISIS. Or like we have, we have this stigma that we have slowly grown as like anyone that isn't like us Americans. Yeah. It's not even just white, white, black, Hispanic, well, anyone that isn't us. It's, I mean, it's, it's tribalism at its core, right? Because every country does it. If yeah. you're not doing it our way, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong. And it's very yep. fascinating because I, I read web novels, right? Like yeah. I read Korean web novels, Japanese web novels, Chinese web novels, you know, um, American web novels and Russian web novels, obviously, right? Um, Just web novels. You know, because I'm always about a good story, and sometimes yeah. I can't get enough from books, and I can't get enough books fast enough, so I, I turn to web novels to try and fill the void. Understandable. Um, But it's fascinating to see, especially with, like, Chinese web novels and Korean web novels and stuff, how they view themselves by the way they write about them. And how they write about other countries. Which, obviously, you know, I live in America, so the way that they write about America. You're like, oh, that's not true. But, oh, this is interesting. Well, and, and obviously, you're you're writing about things from your country's perspective, so your country will be the focal point of your story. Yeah, you're third-eyed blind somewhere. You're yeah. not fully... Yeah. And it, it's just fascinating to me because you could see the cultural dynamics and how different it is from us. You can see the social dynamics, how different it is from us. Talking about culture and the way things are seen, 
I read something the other day that I found very interesting. What's up? So when you're cutting your steak, your meat, whatever, which hand do you hold your knife in? My right hand. Okay, so you switch your fork over to your left hand. Yeah. In Europe, there's like, they immediately know you're American. Because in Europe, they keep their fork in the right hand and they cut with their left hand. It's something trained from a very young age, another cultural thing. Yeah. That isn't even thought about. Like, we don't think about it. like, oh, I'm just, because I'm more dominant with this hand or I'm more dominant with this hand, I'm going to switch it so the more dominant hand is cutting the right. food I'm eating. Because I have more control. And it was just like, I was like, oh, this is interesting while we're talking about culture. It's just one of the things you don't think about. So where do you keep your spaghetti scissors to, to cut the spaghetti as you pick it up and eat it? I don't. No? I don't use spaghetti scissors. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Mm. Spaghetti scissors is the way of life. I don't even know what that is. No, it's, it's, a, it's a joke. Oh, okay. Especially. Totally went over my head. No. Uh, no, because I, I, saw, I saw some fucking influencer, right, like over in Italy, like, and it's all staged, right? But he's over there in Italy, and he's, like, getting spaghetti and, like, cutting it with scissors oh my goodness and i was like mm, yeah that's the stuff right there putting ice cubes and wine mm, yeah <laughs> i've totally so we had some of our italian friends come over a couple years back and i wouldn't i wouldn't intentionally try to piss them off but all my wine's in the fridge <laughs> because i enjoy cold drinks across the board or spaghetti i would break the noodles before i put them in the pot to boil them they would lose their mind or i was like oh yeah i'll make spaghetti and We'll have a nice Italian dish. They come over. I'm still cooking. We're all we're cooking at the at the house up the road. And it was like, oh, we broke the noodles, and oh, here you go. The sauce is in a, a, can, a can or a jar, and they're just over there losing their minds. They're like, this isn't how you do it. They're the ones that got me on espresso and the mocha pot, and which, by the way, that's definitely the way to do coffee, especially espresso. It's delicious. I'm I'm still a fan of if we're gonna do like. We're, we're, we're making my coffee. I'm still all about a um, a siphon coffee maker. Quantity-wise, yes. No, no. For not me, even, yes. Not even quantity. It's pure flavor. Nothing to me is smoother than a siphon coffee maker. Really? Really. Have I never made you coffee in my siphon maker before? No. Nope. Oh, my God. First off, I love it because it looks like a fucking science experiment. Okay? Okay. Because... The way it's all it's all like vacuum based, right? Your so, bad teach me some. So you you put your coffee ground it's it's two chambers, right? Okay. And your water goes in the bottom chamber and your coffee grounds go into the top chamber. And you put it down and there's a long glass tube that goes from one up into the other and it's sealed with a rubber gasket in between. Right? And as you heat it up, the water flows up into the top. And sits there and, and percolates and bubbles for a minute, and then you take it off heat, and the water gets just pulled back down. back down by vacuum. Okay. And it like strains it out against the filter, and it's just the coolest fucking way to make coffee to me. But it also makes a very very smooth, tasty coffee. It's better than French press. Maybe that's why I like the mocha pot, because it has very similar, at similar build to it because there's a long stem that goes all the way from the base because you have your base with your water yeah and then you have your filter metal filter that goes in with a long stem that goes yeah. to the bottom where all your water is and that's where you put your grounds and above that you have your top half the long stem which then that's where all the coffee goes without any grounds so it's very similar aspect but you're yeah. saying the difference between the mocha pot and your drainage siphon filter siphon, siphon coffee maker is it goes up and then it goes back down this just goes up yeah i mean i'm all next time for you come flavorful over, next coffee. time you come over i'm gonna make you some i'm definitely excited i'm always up for coffee now older i get oh i'd love me some i love me some good coffee i've got the french press i've got the and of course me being a clumsy fucking lumbering bastard i've broken so many of them right I think my French press currently doesn't have the plastic ring around it anymore because I somehow broke that while cleaning it. Okay. Right? So it doesn't have the handle or anything like that. It's just a fucking beaker. 
And I'm like, well, I'm not buying a new one because this one will this work. This one still works. Um, yeah. I I uh, I like the AeroPress. I like making coffee with the AeroPress. That's nice. See, when I make coffee, it's just most times just in the mocha pot. I'll wait for it to boil over and then fill into the top cavity and and then once it stops steaming, I was like, okay, it's it's ready. Yeah. And then I'll ice it down because I'm a sinner and I like cold coffee. And I really I want to find I want to find because you know percolators are just whatever, right? But I want to find like a cast like an old school cast iron coffee pot for for camping. Ooh. Because doing it I the flavor would slowly just live there. Because doing cowboy coffee, I've done cowboy coffee multiple times, right? But I normally do it in a pot. Um but I want like like a a, a normal yeah. pot, right? But I want to do like I want it like a cast iron fucking coffee pot. You know? Because I'm not afraid of grounds or anything like that. I'm not afraid of grounds. I don't care. Plus, I, I, I found out the trick by watching someone uh, talking about this because I was fascinated because he's like, here's how you make, you know, cowboy coffee. And I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I know how to make cowboy coffee. And he's like, like, I'm in my cowboy phase. Been that way for <laughs> years. <laughs> and he's, but he told, he, he pointed out something that I didn't know because, you know, I just put it on there and, and fucking... Oil, it does its oil thing. coffee until it's ready to go, right? Because you can smell it when it's ready to go. Um, he said once you take it off, you sprinkle cold water over the top, and it causes the grounds to, to settle drop. to the bottom. Okay. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> and it works. Oh, it's the same thing with the egg trick. Like making over easy eggs. Yeah. Get a lid and just sprinkle a little bit of water in there. And then the steam will cook the top part of the egg and you never have to flip it. See, I'm an idiot. Because you said put a cup of water in there. <laughs> Wait, you told me how to do it? So there I go and I was like, he said put a cup of water in there. I poured a cup of water he in there. He poured and I was an like, actual cup. I was like, I, I didn't think this through. <laughs> that's a lot of water. I was like, that's a, that's a lot of water. I'm steaming all my eggs. <laughs> like, I boiled my eggs after I fried them. <laughs> Boiled, fried. So, so instructions unclear. <laughs> Keep giving me the wrong directions. So I'm I'm not the I'm not the brightest man you ever done met. <laughs> what, what's that saying? Instructions unclear. Put dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, man. The other thing I found interesting. And we talked about this before we started. Most people who own Teslas and drive Teslas are more blue. And most people who own and drive Rivians are more red politically. Which I didn't even know what a Rivian was until you told me. So it was I the didn't other, know that was a thing. It was another electric car that I was looking at at the time. But the interesting thing is Bezos is more blue, but most of his customers are red. <laughs> Elon is more red and most of his customers are blue so politically it's just one of those interesting speaking of electric I want to talk about your new truck the torque, the e-torque because it's got something in it that I'd never heard of before multiple pe people I've talked to have never heard of before motor versus alternator yeah it doesn't have a fucking alternator yeah it's all electric motor it's an electric motor instead of an alternator it's fucking wild. It's supposed to last longer. I mean, they've done tests, they've done studies, and I'm not disagreeing with it, right? It is. Because it is different because yeah, I opened the bay and I'm expect expecting the alternator there. Right. My Iron Man ring, as I always call it, on everything, and it's like that's a giant block of metal. Okay, this is all a motor. Okay, so what starts my car normally? It's an alternator. Yeah. What starts my truck? It's not an alternator. It's an electric motor that connects to the battery. So, and I'm still trying to understand the full, how it starts it. Cause you no, know, the alternator, it starts to charge, yeah. it spins, and that's the way an alternator works. So my guess, my assumption is the e-motor, the e-torque motor does the same thing. But the e-torque motor also gives me more torque power off the bat versus spooling up longer so it 
in a way it seems like it kind of acts like a turbo without being a turbo so what normally kills an alternator is it corrosion corrosion bad bad that corrosion again corrosion 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 <laughs> corrosion corrosion <laughs> what now i feel like i'm saying it wrong it don't have a z in it brother <laughs> corrosion <laughs> I, don't, I don't see what i'm saying wrong but whatever no but normally it gets all gunky and dirty and your leads aren't going that way or it's pulling too much of a charge because of how dirty it is so it doesn't fully fully work but it's pretty much it just spins it's your I mean, iron it, it's a generator right it's Sim just simply copper put, wires yeah. wrapped around the thing and it spins and produces a field right pretty much yeah it's magnets and whatnot but yeah, yeah. it's the and science same thing. or some shit science or some shit corrosion corrosion <laughs> you just threw a th yeah, in there brother i did because I, I don't understand how i'm saying corrosion wrong Cro <laughs> corrosion yeah corrosion <laughs> i don't under corrosion corrosion <laughs> whatever i'm not saying it wrong corrosion <laughs> I just say it differently. Crozion. Crozion. I don't get it. Crozion. Uh, okay. Oh, man. Woo. But yeah, I mean, essentially it just gets all gunky and dirty. And the more dirty it is, the harder it is to start because it's pulling more electricity to start it. I mean, you normally have like a 12 volt battery in there. Yeah. So that's, that's the biggest issue with that. But this... I would think, oh, well, the fix would just be encapsulate it, cover it with something mm -hmm. where it still has enough space to breathe and it gets out of all the gunk and... Put filters around there or some shit? I, I wouldn't even go that far. Kind of like how your your uh, air filter has its own box. I'd do the same thing. But maybe it's Except a heat. my air maybe filter it's... don't have it. It's got its own. It has its with own enclosure. With the window. So, I mean, maybe there's other ways to fix it, but maybe for the better sake of the engine, a motor, electric motor, does the same thing, and it kicks it over like that. So, if that's the solution, cool. And if I get more torque off the line, and if you're just advertising, it's like, oh, you get more torque. And it was like, okay, I get more torque, but you took my damn alternator. Right. Like, you, you could restart someone's heart with an alternator. Like, there, there's a... There's a lot of things you can do with an alternator. Yeah. And you just... Was copper too expensive? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I don't know the internals of and your this damn is, engine. And that's something for the motor aspect of it that I still want to dive more into and understand fully as a mechanic. It's like, this is interesting. So we're going to tear it out and crack, crack it open, right? In five years. Damn. So that way I can fully get my full warranty usage out of it. You'll need that warranty. You ain't gonna use it anyways. You can't replace that truck before five years is out. We use it for the Jeep. For like three years. With the warranty? Yep. Wow. Cause I like, go oh, an oil change that I don't want to do. Oh, new tires because this one had a nail it. I didn't want to. No, I'm well over 100,000 miles. I don't get that no more. Oh no. I mean, I bought my Tesla what last year? And we're already 30,000 miles. I bought my truck in 21, and I'm over, I'm at 106,000 miles. We're on par, pretty close to getting that way in a couple years with the Tesla. Yeah, a couple more years. Yeah. Where will my truck be then? You had three years for your truck. I bought my car last year, and I put 25,000 miles on it. Where will I be by then? I don't care. I wow. bought my Tesla after your truck. No one cares about your fucking Tesla, all right? I got diesel. You got a fucking girl car. Razzle dead. Damn straight. The girl <laughs> car goes fast, though, and I like it. Diesel diesel don't need to stop to get charged up. No, you just have to refill. Just put more go juice in it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about trying to track down the charging station and waiting for five hours. I don't have to wait for five hours. Fifteen minutes. I'm good and gone. I don't believe you. Thank you. I think you're a liar. I mean, that, that's fine. A cheat? A liar? Mm -hmm. No woman's desire? At least one woman's desire. 
I'm pretty sure she's settled. Wow, she's settled. I'm chopped liver. <laughs> Wait till I get my new glasses from the '70s. <laughs> she won't be able to stop looking at me. You mean your your uh, your uh, pervert glasses? Yeah, she said pervert glasses. I think they more look more like Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses than anything else. That was just the style for the time. I mean, yeah, it was just '70s glasses, but I got them because I thought they actually looked cool. And they were cheap. And they were cheap. By the way, you just throw your prescription in there, and then you measure. Easiest way to measure, by the way, you just throw a card right here, and it measures your pupils. Yeah. I was like, nah, this is bullshit, because I have the measurement there, which is 62. And then I was like, I'm gonna see how accurate this is. Same freaking number with the card. I oh, was yeah. like, it blew my mind. Badass. Okay, cool. And then it tells you based off your pupils and your pupil size and your eye size, which glass frames are the best for your face. I was like, okay. And if you want to get one that's bigger or smaller than your face, is like, well, it's gonna cost like I think nine dollars to change the size to your face. Oh no. It's like Okay, when you say $9, it's like, okay, that's not bad to fix a frame. But the glasses were only like $4. Yeah. And my prescription was $10 <laughs> on top of it. So now I'm paying $14, then plus the 9 Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I'll throw Done. $9 on there. Two pairs of glasses. Sunglasses and normal glasses. $122. And the VA is just like, we'll pay for that. Yeah. Oh, and it's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Here's my community care bill. Here you go, and I'll get refunded. So pretty much I didn't pay for two sets of glasses. One from the 60s, the hippie sunglasses, and then... Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. My Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Mm. Just If you're going to go killing a whole bunch of people, can you leave me out? I'll just record it, throw it on YouTube. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that can't possibly go wrong. That can't possibly. I mean, we already have people running over people, and that gets posted to YouTube. I just saw a video where a guy's arm, he got eaten by a shark. What a time we live in where yeah. people record atrocities and post it online. But people say the wrong thing and it gets taken down. <sighs> if, you don't, if you don't follow the party view. No, the party down. view. So we'll catch you on the next segment. Next segment. You gotta double tap it because the thing's gotta come on. Okay, there you go. All right, let's talk about dogs. I mean, I've had a number since I've lived here in Texas. Um, why the fuck are we inventing all these great technologies and all this shit, and we haven't figured out how to make it to where dogs will live for fifty years? Ooh, but cats will live forever. Fuck cats, man. But, I'd fucking kill my cat in a heartbeat if it get her another 10 years. But think about it. It's like dogs only have, at most, 12 years is your average. 15, 16. 15, 16 years. Cats are like, I'm 37. Yeah, I've I've got a cat right now who's 19 fucking years old. It's like, just die already. I'd snap his neck in a heartbeat if I could give my dog some more years. Yeah, well, Pearl Scout's a saint. And she loves you to death. Or even Cabo. But would you take away Pearl's life for more Cabo life? Or vice versa? Or take away Cabo's no. life for more no. Pearl life? No. No, no just no. cats for dogs. Just cats for dogs. Uh, we just, we have to set a staple somewhere. Yeah, we have yeah to have I mean, a line. you know, I'd, I'd fucking, damn it, I love Jack though. But I'd, <laughs> I think I'd kill Jack for Pearl. <laughs> What if, for every cat you killed, you had to give half the life to two different dogs? Boom, problem solved. Fuck, that's a lot of dead cats. <laughs> that's a lot of dead cats, bro. My, this dog's been in my family for 400 years. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just, I've got entire breeding farms of cats just to keep my dog going. <laughs> the dead cat podcast. <laughs> fucking people are like how do you make money it's like i breed cats to kill them for dogs <laughs> my dog's gonna live forever do you, do you that, like feed it for its blood nope 
Just dead cats. Just dead cats. <laughs> no, but I mean, seriously, why why don't we... I mean, we're... All these medical advances and we can't If we increase. can't get dogs to live longer? Shit, man. Come on. Is it the food we're giving? Do we just feed them cat food and they live forever now? Fuck. Like, what is... What, there's, there's what do gotta we have be, to do? There's got to be some magic formula. Like, I'm already vaccinating. I'm already give, feeding them good food. I'm already giving them, like, fish oil and shit like this. Maybe the solution is to stop vaccinating them and just give them cat food and make them poop in a litter box. You know what? Shut your whore mouth, all right? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's every single dog I've had to put down or get put down. It sucks. Yeah. It was like, I thought they'd be here forever. But dogs are just too good for us. I've got the solution. Stop getting dogs. Humans only live 12 years. Ooh. <laughs> no. No. There's... No. You, you Grandma hit... lived to 13. You hit adulthood <laughs> at like two... You fucking, you know. You work from three to seven. <laughs> and then and then you, like, get ready to die, right? And you, you get a dog when you're a little kid, and that's your dog for life. Oh, dear. You get a dog when you're born. Yeah. No, but, I mean, realistically, can we figure it out? Because, like, you get this awesome animal. Like, this 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 creature that loves you unconditionally unconditionally oh yeah you leave the house so like and then you come back and it's like oh hi what, what's yeah. up what's, what, what's going on yeah yeah how's everything's day? awesome like you are down in the dumps and your dog's like are you are you laying on the ground in sadness that sounds cool i'll lay down with you're you you on the ground with me okay cool yeah or even after you spank them you scold them and then like 2 minutes later they're like okay we're like, friends I'll be your again best now friend. yeah yeah, no, dogs are dogs are too good for us, especially since how much they love you. It's like, without a doubt, you can beat the snot out of... You see it. You see it in all the abused dogs and all the fight dogs. Their well, they, owner still comes back, and the dog's just like, oh, hey. he's coming to play with me. Oh, he was like, how come even those dogs have the same mentality that properly living dogs do? do yeah like okay so their whole mentality is good of i love you no matter what it's like yeah I can mean, we can we increase their life by i don't know a fourth of what their life is now like okay so on average they live to about 12 to 15 can we give them another four years another five years like something hey, can i get my dog to live for 30 years hey, let's let's step this up a notch i want my dog to live as long as a parrot Oh dear God! Eighty-year-old dog. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want like hand-me-down dogs, right? Like I want my parents to be like riding up in the wheel. It's like you'll take care of my dog because it'll outlive me. And you get the poodle. Yeah. And you get the Shih Tzu. And you. <laughs> I'd be like, mm, which kid do I actually favor more? Okay, you get Bo. <laughs> right. And you, you can get Bo and Nessie. There you go. And you can get Toby because she'll just love you unconditionally and never leave you alone. She still has the bracelet on. <laughs> yeah, that's because she's beautiful. She is beautiful. You rock and red. Your scarlet band. Yeah, no, dogs are just too good for us. They are. They just love us unconditionally. Always happy we're there. <sighs> Always happy to go along for the ride. They're always down for an adventure. Shoot. I have to be careful leaving the house in the morning. Because if I'm not sneaky when I open the door, Toby and Bo are like, we're going for a car ride. It's like, no. I'm going to work. You're not going You're for not a car <laughs> ride. <laughs> You're not going with me. It's like, ugh. And then you feed them. They're like, this is the first time I've eaten since forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, no, we need some medical advances. We need medical advances for dogs. Yeah. Not I'll cats, support, dogs. <clears throat> I'll support medical advances for dogs over humans now. Because I like dogs more than humans. I stand by this. 
Same. I'm, I'm going to run a campaign on it. Go fund me. Go fund me. Make it go fund me. Make it go fund me to, to, for research for dog. Yep. Dog longevity. Dog longevity. Ooh, maybe we could start doing those essential oils on dogs. He's just back there chewing wood, I guess. Bo. Dork. So we're, we're getting about that time. Oh, that time? King for an issue. Did you got one? Do you have one? I got one. Oh, I'll totally back up. Let's go. Okay. How do you fix the cartel? Are we lumping cartels in with mafias and mobs? No, nope, I'm just saying... Just cartels. Just the cartels in Mexico and in Central Everyone's America. Everyone south of Texas yeah. border. Hmm. All the ones that are taking advantage of us through the drug trade and the so other trade. So just trades. specifically drug cartels. Yeah, yeah I, I said other trade. The, the cartels that are south of the border. Human trafficking. Yeah, yeah, so just the cartels, pretty much Mexico all the way down to, uh, yeah, Bolivia. Yeah. Hmm fix them so not change them but fix the issues into america fix like what are we fixing like get rid of them or actually i'm gonna leave this open-ended what do you consider fixing the cartel i wouldn't get rid of them no nope i wouldn't okay so hot take let's go okay so i'm a strong believer in we always need a big bet yeah the only way you're gonna progress if there's a big bet have it in mafia, have it in mobs, have it with World War II. So cartel living close to border towns. And we're what, two, three hours from the border? Yeah. No, keep them. We need to keep them, but we need to... The uh, My belief is the cartel needs a, a more aggressive structure. It was like... Maybe we start pushing it as like... Okay, well, every couple of years, let's go back to tribal. Let's go back to Incan tribal territory. It was like leadership across the board. I have an issue with you. Let's fight. Let's duke it out. Let's see who wins. Boom. Okay, cool. Maybe we're going to have more aggressive. Maybe we're going to have every couple of years things change. Okay, well, they're already bringing drugs over whenever anyway. Right. And it doesn't matter what we do. They're going to keep doing it. So I think the fix for that... I don't know. Just start putting them on blast. Putting them on blast across the board because then they will be forced to change change something on their end. Leadership structure, the way they do things. And this has been proven throughout history. If I put you on blast because, I don't know, we were talking about killing cats earlier. You keep running over cats in your truck. And it's like, oh, Mike runs over a cat every time he sees a cat because it, gives his, because it gives his dog more life. It's like, Okay, well, if I start broadcasting this in the news all the time, now more and more people are aware, more people are talking about it. So you have this notoriety about you now. So if we do the same thing for the cartels and we just keep putting them on blast instead of just they have a 30 30 second segment on whatever news and then we go into everything else. It's not my fault that I have the best superpower in which I (laughs) run over a cat and I give my dog more life, okay? (laughs) I think the fix for that would be to give them more notoriety. So you're just saying open people's eyes to what, what they are and what's going on. Yes, because publicity is publicity. Good, bad, doesn't matter. It's going to force them to change the way they do things across the board. Because people that are doing shady stuff don't want to be seen. For example, so we have a snack fund where we work <coughs> and it has to close down because of thievery. Okay, well, I was like, well, maybe if we put in like a high traffic area where more people can see it. No, because it it's an eyesore. I was like, well, the eyesore is now being stolen from. Right. So less people see it. So if more people saw it, less people would want to take from it, which has been proven to work. Snack funds has been proven to work across the board. The more people that are aware of a situation, more people that are visible are watching out for these things. Kidnappings. Like, that's been a big thing. I don't know, pretty much across Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I think just throwing notoriety out there, giving more and more people view on what's actually happening. Because eventually you're not going to be able to outrun what's being talked about. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you've touched on part of what I was going to talk about is part of the problem with the cartels that they've gotten enough influence and everything and they fed that back into their communities and their communities are like, well, we're not going to out them. Yep. You know, so they've they've been given too power, too much power. But I mean, obviously, I, one of the things is we gotta have the 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 CIA stop giving them guns. Um, that would help. That would help a lot. But I mean, no. I mean, honestly, when it comes to Mexico and when it comes to Central America and stuff like that, we need to send in. We we need to send in a a a force and its only job is to wipe the cartels off the face of the earth. If you don't want to get wiped off the face of the earth, stop if you don't want to get your... Yeah, stop being a cartel member. You stop being a cartel member, good to go. You go back to your community. But, you know, it part of it is, like you said, you need to open the community's eyes because they've got TV shows down in Mexico and everything that you know, what, what's where I'm looking for? Where where they where they make it look good? Where they make yeah. the cartel shit look like? Not even down in Mexico. They have it here. Yeah. It was like oh, there was there was one where they cover all their faces and their voices are muffled and changed. But it was like pretty much how to be a gang member. Yeah. It it's not what it was called, but it, it was behind the scenes of trading ghost guns and drugs and it's your we're in the states recording this. Yeah. It was like okay but that's making them look good no let's put all their dirty deeds out and put them on blast everyone everyone e- that is everyone everywhere is like you're less likely to do this the more people know about it because shame will kick in somewhere yeah but I, I think the the biggest problem is that you know we we need the Mexican government to legitimately accept our help and we send in strong forces and start start from the top down and we're just like one country to the next it's like you're a cartel fucking wiped off the map yep you know let's go back to uh death by firing range i'm sorry right shooting squad death squad you know if we're going to if you're going to do a war on drugs why don't you actually do a fucking war on drugs instead of buy from one and then just distribute them somewhere else yeah but I don't. I mean, there's tons of holes in this. Oh, in there's my, holes in, in my problem, in, in, in my solution. And I don't think. I mean, what do I always say? It's a complex situation. It's a complex issue that's going to take a complex fix. And and I don't have all the answers because realistically, we've seen it when we're talking about going into these environments where they they're on their own stomping grounds. So you go and try and clear them out. You can't find them. Yep. Right. And we saw the same thing in the Middle East. You saw it. It just... It w- and it would be the same thing with the cartel. I mean, obviously, the, the best solution would be to, to remove their source of income and make it to where, you know, they had no way to, to sell. We've been fighting that for 40 years now. Obviously, that's not working. You know, the, the other thing is, is that you could legalize almost everything. Yeah, and then that could potentially fix it. Everything except for, what, heroin, crack, and meth? Because those, those, I thought the West Coast legalized all those. Well, I mean, you know, nonchalantly, kind of. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm wrong. But no, there's, there's no direct solution. I wouldn't get rid of them. I'll just put them on blast. Because the more people that know about it, the less people actually want to do business with you. Because it's like, well, I saw you dealing drugs with this person, on the news. So who's to say you're not being recorded now? Right. It's like, I don't want to be seen with you. So, I mean, maybe that's a fix. Maybe just wiping off the face of the earth is another one. But it's a complex issue. And it's kind of oh. hard. But, yeah, I think that's name pending. Yeah. That's Th- name this pending. This has been name pending. I'm still Rep Eck. And I'm still Keeper. I'm still Keeper. Eckum? Eckum. Echo. Or or sometimes called Mike. Sometimes called Mike. We got Toby over here. 
Again, our furry co-host. Pearl Cabo. And Cabo. And Bo and Duke's back there, passed out. He's passed out. So, um, we'll catch you on the next episode. It's been fun. Has it been fun? It's never been fun. It's been something. Mike's unenjoyable half the time. Throw a comment down below. I'll respond. I need you to fuck that like button. And tickle that subscribe. Tickle that subscribe. Do us a favor. Check out our other channel. K&M. K&M Workshop. Um, I need you to go ahead and support your support your military, support your veterans, support your first responders. Yep. And, you know, let us know what you want us to talk about if you want us to talk about something. We're not going to listen to you, but you can let us know anyways. Yeah, you can let us know. We we might not We're not going to listen to you. Yeah. But catch y'all later.